Professor Dave and Chegg here, we've learned about a number of transformations we can perform on alkenes. So let's learn about a few more, those being epoxidation and hydroxylation. These are useful techniques, so let's get a closer look. To start, we need to learn about a new oxygen-containing functional group, which is called an epoxide. These are three-membered rings with oxygen at one of the positions, and they have some interesting properties and applications. Given that this oxygen atom has alkyl on either side, epoxides qualify as ethers, though they are cyclic ethers. Here is the simplest epoxide, oxacyclopropane, so let's check out some things this will do. First, epoxides are susceptible to nucleophilic attack. This may seem strange because although carbon-oxygen bonds are polar, we do not see this activity with alcohols, but this situation is a bit different. With any three-membered ring, there is some amount of ring strain. This is because the geometry of the ring compresses bond angles beyond the 109.5 degrees that is typical for an sp3 center, since we know that triangles have 60 degree angles. So if we think of this like a compressed spring, we can see that it is energetically favorable for these to open up. Here we can see a typical SN2 nucleophile, like a thiolate ion, attacking one of these carbons. This carbon-oxygen bond will break, and the oxygen will remain tethered to the molecule because of this other carbon-oxygen bond. It can then pick up a proton from solution, and we end up with this SN2 product. We will return to this concept in a moment. First, we must discuss epoxide formation. A very common way we can make these is by using an alkene reactant and a reagent called metachloroperoxybenzoic acid, or MCPBA. This will turn an alkene into an epoxide, because one of these oxygen atoms in this functional group will get transferred into this pi bond. Another way to get an epoxide is to form a halohydrin, which means a hydroxyl and a halogen on adjacent carbons. This can form when performing halogenation in the presence of water, as water can attack the intermediate instead of the halide ion to produce the halohydrin. Then base can be used to deprotonate the hydroxyl, and the resulting oxyanion can attack the carbon that bears the halogen in SN2 fashion, since the stereochemistry allows for the backside attack, and the halogen is kicked off, yielding the epoxide. Epoxide formation is a key transformation, because from epoxides we can do a number of different things. First, epoxides offer a way to achieve anti-dihydroxylation if we open up an epoxide with water, typically in acidic conditions. The way this works is that the oxygen is protonated by the acid, and then water attacks one of the carbons in the epoxide to pop open the ring via SN2, which must proceed via a backside attack, which means that on a cyclic reagent like this, once the water that attacked is deprotonated, the resulting hydroxyls must be trans to one another. So epoxidation is simply the first step of the dihydroxylation. As we can see, with dihydroxylation, it is very easy to tell what is happening here by the name of the reaction. We are adding two hydroxyl groups, one to each carbon in the pi bond. This means that whereas a hydration will yield an alcohol, a dihydroxylation will yield a vicinal diol. Here, diol means that there are two hydroxyl groups, and vicinal means that they are specifically on adjacent carbons. Let's look at another way we can achieve this transformation. One reagent we can use to achieve a syn dihydroxylation is osmium tetroxide, or OSO4. This promotes syn addition because both of the oxygen atoms being added come from the same compound, so it's a little bit like catalytic hydrogenation, where the hydrogens are added from the solid catalytic surface. Here, we have a shuffling of electrons that will produce this cyclic intermediate, and then some kind of reducing agent will kick off the osmium and yield the two hydroxyl groups. As we can see, these must be cis to one another on the product, because it was a syn addition. Even with linear molecules, where we can't use cis and trans to describe the product, we must still be aware of our stereochemistry as we want to draw the correct stereoisomer for our product. Just make sure to add the hydroxyls to the same side of the pi bond, and everything will work out. 
With that, we should now understand what epoxides are and how they form, what we can do with them, including hydroxylation reactions, as well as another method of hydroxylation that does not utilize epoxides. Professor Dave for Check. See you next time.